Good afternoon and welcome. You're listening to the Ideal Life Live Training Radio Show with Ria Singh Newbo, where the experts provide you with simple tips, tools, and strategies on life, business, and success that will help you on your journey to creating a life of purpose and profits. I'm your host, Ria C. Newbold, and I'm delighted to have you along this afternoon on our episode number 10 of The Ideal Life with training on the topic, The Importance of a Healthy Self-Esteem. Today's show is being sponsored by Converge for all of your digital marketing services and Alive for free and unlimited Alive to Alive calls. Terms and conditions apply. Over the next 60 minutes, you will learn what is self-esteem. Number two, five easy ways to improve an individual's self-esteem. Number three, the four important factors that could impact an individual's self-esteem. Number four, biblical references to boost self-esteem. Number five, the benefits of creating and maintaining a healthy self-esteem. And number six, what everyone ought to know about self-esteem. Our guest today is Mrs. Lisa Adderley Paul. She's a lecturer, activities coordinator, community service and leadership development enthusiast, and a motivational speaker. Welcome to you, Lisa. Thank you, Ria. Thanks for having me. Listen, I am delighted. I'm excited to have you along with us today sharing on this topic. And I know you have a whole wealth of knowledge and a lot of information that you want to share with us. But before we actually get into on today's topic, I just wanted to let our listeners know that if they wanted to connect with us on Facebook, you can go to my Facebook page, which is Ria C. Newbold, Motivate, Activate, Create, and we can further our conversations there. Now, we're just going to go straight into our, our, our first point for today and let us know what is self-esteem. Okay, first of all, Ria, just without getting into all of the Webster's dictionaries and everything, just... Putting it into a nutshell, it's how you feel about you. What are your thoughts about who you are as an individual, Mm -hmm. your capabilities, and your worth? That's in a nutshell, if you want to merge all of the definitions. Because we want to make it simple and easy to understand, yes. Well, we'll go go, um, a little bit deeper Mm -hmm. about the self-esteem. I know you said you give it to us in a nutshell, Mm -hmm. but I want you to just give us a little bit more. Okay. Give us some examples of of what is it like for a person to to have high self-esteem or or even to to exercise it. Okay, but before I answer that, I would would say this to you. I know that culturally a lot of us have been taught or guided to believe that once you dress up, you have nice things, that means you have a healthy self-esteem. Mm-hmm. You put on your makeup, your face is like the young people say on fleek or your face <laughs> pink, and that means you're feeling good about mm-hmm. yourself. And that can never be so far from the truth. Because, like, take, I would use myself for mm-hmm. an example. Every day I get up, I put on makeup. Because I love makeup. I Listen, <laughs> and for our listening audience, this makeup that this Miss Paul has on, I mean, like she said, it's on fleek. She have this all together. I'm like, oh my God, you just came ready for the camera. You need to give me a few lessons. No problem, no problem. <laughs> so, like I was saying, so your self-esteem levels have nothing to do now. Now, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. If you have a healthy self-esteem, you feel good about you, you're comfortable um, in in who you are as an individual, a part of it is taking care of yourself and having pride in your appearance. So, you know, that's nothing is wrong with that. But you can't just look at a person who's dressed up and say they have a healthy self-esteem. Because like I said, using myself as an example, a former makeup artist, I know how to put on my makeup. Mm-hmm. I put on my makeup every single day. Mm-hmm. Now, truth be told, if I'm feeling a little bit more fabulous, it's going to be probably a little bit more dramatic or glamorous, but every single day. And that doesn't come from how I feel about myself per se. That came from one experience. Mm-hmm. I was 17 years old. I was in a car accident, and I left the house um, in a way that I really wasn't proud of. Whoa. And on the corner of East Street and Balfour Avenue at rush hour traffic, I was pulling out curlers 
and trying to fix myself. So I promised myself, for as good as I know how I could look, mm -hmm. this is how I'm going to look when I go out because I don't want anyone to see me out of place. So when we talk about self-esteem, it goes deeper than the surface. Okay. Because the level, and I don't want to get, like, preempt some of the things, some of the points, mm -hmm. but it goes in that, in, into that place that when, no matter what anybody says, no matter what's going on around you, mm -hmm. no matter what's in your pocket, mm -hmm. no matter um, what's on the, on the wall by way of accolades, you know that they are just things that are a part of, of or an extension of what you do but you know that that's not essentially who you are mm -hmm. my makeup is not me because I can there was a, a, a point in my life I would not dare go anywhere without the face on I could do that because I'm a beautiful girl yeah, yeah you, you, you know so so it, it goes beyond the surface stuff mm -hmm. of how we put this this image together mm -hmm. of what we think the world wants of us there is when when like the lights, like how we have the lights in the studio, the mm -hmm. lights and everything, all of the performances are done. Are you truly comfortable? Mm -hmm. Are you truly at ease? Do you truly have peace mm -hmm. with who you are as an individual, minus all of the accomplishments or minus all of the different um, possessions? Because mm -hmm. that's not you. Right. You know, so that, and then we'll get deeper into that as we go through this hour. Well, you know, even as you talked about um, having the experience, with the, the accident, I had almost like a similar experience too. And I was like, oh my goodness, you need mm -hmm. to make sure. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, I didn't have the whole curlers in the hair kind of thing. Yeah, but I just, it, it just reminded me and it, it caused me to be a lot more aware as to when I'm coming out of the house mm -hmm. exactly how, I mean, you know, I'm not going to always be wearing, you know, I may be dragging the slippers, but not necessarily, you know, mm -hmm. but I, I'm, I'm careful as to how it is I really do come out of the house because of that experience. Mm -hmm. And that happened when I was a young girl too. Exactly. So I'm like, and my mother was like, see, you always have to make sure how you're coming out of the house. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so from that day to this, I am mindful. Mm -hmm. Be careful how you're coming out of the house. So let's talk about the five easy ways to improve an individual's self-esteem. Because I'm sure we have some persons out there who probably may have even identified with some of the things that you touched on already mm -hmm. in the definition. But how do you now improve your self-esteem? Okay, the first point, Rhea, is that we have to evaluate our present location. Okay. Um, when, I, when I thought about this statement, I'm reminded of Zig Ziglar, one of the... Um, authorities in public speaking and mm -hmm. motivation and he said that motivation is like bathing it doesn't last so you have to keep working at it so we bathe today and then we're, and, and in this heat we're gonna have to probably bathe several Multiple times, times. <laughs> today so the, the same thing with self-esteem like today or in this period of your life, you may have a healthy self-esteem, everything's going well, mm -hmm. and then you may end up going through some experiences that can shake your world, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And so from time to time, just like how if you're a business owner, you have to take inventory, you have to take stock, we have to do that with our lives. And yeah. I think sometimes we're so busy doing so much stuff. So we, we don't take... Yeah, we don't just stop. So the thing that we have to do is, we're so busy and getting back to the appearances, presenting ourselves for our family, for the, the vision that we have and all the rest of these wonderful things. And they have its proper place, but we have to stop for a minute mm -hmm. and say, you know what, where am I really? Mm -hmm. When I take off this makeup, when I take off these clothes, when the labels are left, when I'm by myself, is this all a big show or mm -hmm. do I really feel comfortable? So the first thing that we have to do is we have to evaluate our present location. Where are we? Mm -hmm. You know, so we've got to ask ourselves some, some hard and hitting questions. How do I really feel about me? Um, some experts say, and, and different persons say, stand in front of the make in, in, in the mirror, totally naked. Mm -hmm. And what, what comes up? And when I say what comes up, it's does ridicule and, and criticisms and all of these awful things come up? Or do you feel comfortable with who you are as mm -hmm. an individual? And we're just talking about that's just the, the physical appearance. But that starts and then we go into other stuff. So we've got to evaluate where we are. Mm -hmm. And even if, let's say you ask me that question, I might not want to tell Rio 
Rio, this is how I feel. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is I have to tell Lisa how Lisa feels. So right. we've got to take stock, evaluate, be honest. Because the worst lie you can tell is the one you tell to yourself. Listen, that is so true. The worst lie you can say is the one that you tell. I, I actually love the, 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 the quote or what you talked about with Zig Ziglar. Mm -hmm. Motivation is like bathing. And, you know, I gave someone an example earlier um, as it relates to when you purchase a vehicle. When you get that vehicle off of the lot, what do you have to do? You have to ensure that you um, service that vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's not where it's, I bought the vehicle and it's going to last me for 15, 20 years without me having to do any work at exactly. all. You still have to go ahead and do what it takes in order for you to go ahead and now maintain that vehicle for that vehicle to properly function. Exactly. So, yeah, most definitely. So what's the, let's go into the point number two. You said it's, okay. it's five points. Yes. Then the next thing is that I think what we, we take for granted mm -hmm. is that we have to filter our information or our influence sources. Okay. And when, when I mean that I'm talking about like the people in our lives, the, the media, what we read, what we listen to, what, what shows do you listen to, what music do you listen to, um, all of these things, what games do you play? Mm -hmm. um, because all of these will have a direct impact on us. And you can say, oh, um, I could listen to something and I could, I could watch something and it doesn't affect me. Uh -huh. And I would dare go back to the first point, be honest with yourself. It, it's a lie. Mm -hmm. Because if you watch a steady diet, mental diet of a lot of, of aggression, violence, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of loose, vulgar talk, it's only going to take a, t a matter of time mm -hmm. and then you're going to start to, to, to flow with that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what we need to be mindful of it is, you know, a lot of times we, I see these little things on Facebook and everything about kicking people out of your life and kicking out the negative and I laugh. And the reason why I laugh for you is simply this. You don't have to kick anybody out of your life. You be on your path, mm -hmm. be what you're about, stay true to who you are, and if those persons are on the same journey, mm -hmm. You two, you will walk together. Mm -hmm. Like the Bible says, two cannot walk except they be in agreement. Correct. We take that only to me for marriage. That's for anything. Mm -hmm. I cannot be in the same experience with someone if we don't agree on certain things. Right. And so, you don't, in the filtering process, you don't have to be calling people up and giving them notice and sending them stuff. And No, just decide what you want. Be on your path. And if that person is truly not about that, then they're just going to fall away and it's nothing that you have to do, nothing that you have to say. So we have to like really check what we're doing. And so it goes back again to evaluating. Mm -hmm. So when you start to, to, to start to filter this information, it looks something like this. What do you do for entertainment? What are you listening to? Mm -hmm. Is it is it is it um, feeding you, or is it um, feeding? Well, actually, it's always feeding you, but is it feeding you positive stuff? Because mm -hmm. you know, you we, we have some songs out there. If you have a relationship crisis, it tells you things like going and running up the credit card and all sorts of stuff like that. Really, that doesn't make any sense. If you are in a relationship, it, it, it may not make any sense, but in that moment for a person, it may feel good. <laughs> yeah, it may feel good, but here's the cute part about this, whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Well, sure enough. So, so <laughs> then does it, you know, so what we have to do is we have to look at what is it that we're doing. I remember there was a point, I love music, music is, I just love music, but there was a point where all of the songs were, the blues. You know, we call them R&B, but R&B is rhythm and blues. So if you're li constantly listening to things about how your heart is breaking and how it's so awful, mm -hmm. then you know what? That's what, that's what you're going to be running with. You have to, 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 to listen to read things that are going to uplift. Positive, yeah. Yes. So, so when we start filtering this information, it's going to help us because you will find that if you just take stock of every time you watch something, listen to something, just take a minute and say, how does this make me feel? Mm -hmm. Check in. But sometimes we're so busy, we don't even check in with our feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's, that's one of, that's point number two. We've got to filter the information 
and the influence sources, and this includes the people, the media, because if you notice our style, everything is being dictated to and we don't even realize it. Yeah. You know? And so then what happens is we're losing who we are because I don't like something because the media says it's nice. I like it because I like it. Mm -hmm. Now, you may call me old-fashioned in some regards, but that's what I like. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so that's point number two. Well, well before you even go on with point number two, um, and you were talking about kicking them, kicking people out of your path. I think one of the things that I'd want to say on that is a lot of times people just simply don't know how to set boundaries. Mm -hmm. And there's a difficulty in being able to set boundaries. And because... You, we don't necessarily understand how we can actually set boundaries, then we probably resort to, you have to get them totally out of your life. Mm -hmm. But if you give them proper boundaries, then they would know, okay, well, you know something, I could only go so far. Right. This is this is my space where I can function from, and that's what it is that I'm going to, you know, I'm mm -hmm. going to do, I'm going to be in this confine, or because of this boundary, this is what I'm limited to. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily having to kick them out of your life totally. Exactly. But set the proper boundaries so that those who are in your life or maybe in your space, they will know exactly, well, this is how far I can go and this is where I'm allowed to come mm -hmm. or where I'm allowed to be. Um, and even on the, the note with knowing what it is that you're feeding yourself with, I know there was a time back in the day. And I used to sit down and just watch Lifetime movies. Oh, like, that's oh my. a horrible thing. I, like I said, I used to. <laughs> yeah, and I no, found myself being this, oh my goodness, I was so sad. Mm -hmm. Like thinking about all of the problems and, oh, you got to watch it for this one because this one, yeah. and I realized, I'm like, you know something? No, enough of this Lifetime stuff. I can't do it. And I know I have some listening audience who probably saying, no, I got to have me some Lifetime. This is my, no, I can't. I can't do the Lifetime anymore. Because for me, it was not taking me down that positive path. I was feeling too much negativity. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of emotions that was that's tied up in a lot of those movies. And I just couldn't deal with it anymore. I had to save me for me. I agree. I <laughs> and agree. stay away from lifetime. So point number three. <laughs> okay, the next thing is practicing reciting daily affirmations and positive ones. Because here's the thing. Most of us, if you ask the question... Do you practice um, daily affirmations? Most of the persons may say, what is that? Or no, or just, you know, say, no, I don't. But mm -hmm. we do it all the time. We have this inner dialogue that goes on with us constantly. We talk to ourselves all of the time. We may not verbalize it mm -hmm. and answer it, but there's this conversation that goes on. From the time we get up in the morning, you know, and, and let, let's say you're on a job that you don't feel like going through, to you might be laying down trying to figure out, do I have a headache? Do I feel good? I believe this arm is hurting. It's just an inner dialogue. Then you put on the, the clothes and, mm -hmm. and you'll be like, oh, okay, well, wonder how I look in this. And so we've got this thing going on all of the time. Mm -hmm. Then we play around with, with, with conversations that we've had with our family members, with persons to work. The whole nine yards. We've just had a major political shift in the country. A lot of people have a lot of different feelings towards mm -hmm. that. So it's all of these this this stuff going on. And believe it or not, we're constantly saying stuff and affirming things to our stuff to ourselves every single day. So if we're doing it anyhow, then why not make it more intentional? Yes. Why not make it more guided, more deliberate? And so when we say we have to be careful when we say I am um, most yeah because I'm reminded of when when um, the Lord was sending Moses mm -hmm. and he said and Moses was just all upset I can't mm -hmm. I can't talk I why don't you send somebody else <coughs> I can't speak to him and he says you know who should I say and he says yeah. tell him I, I am, am. Mm -hmm. and so when you start to say I am you are calling or putting the God consciousness behind whatever this I am is. So when I think about that and, I, and, I, and that settles in me, I'm thinking, you know something? We really should not say I am anything that is against who God is or, the, or what's, what he's about or what is possible. Mm -hmm. So what do I mean? I am sick. Nothing about God is sick. It's health. So if mm -hmm. you're not feeling well, you start to declare that I am healed. Mm -hmm. But now here's the balance to this. A lot of us want to say stuff and we don't want to do 
what goes along with that yeah. that, that saying yeah. so that it, there is a balance. You see, you can't just say one thing. Now mm -hmm. your actions have to line up. Yeah. And so, but it's a start, you know. We, we're we not going to do anything positive if we don't first say it. And we're not going to say anything positive in, unless we think it. Mm -hmm. So it's just a part of the process. So try when we wake up in the morning, start to, and you talked about it, and I love the word boundaries. Mm -hmm. So let us set a boundary for our daily experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm thinking about the scripture, um, Job 22 and 28, and I love the way the Amplified Version puts it. It says, Thou shalt decree and declare a thing, it and it be. shall be established. Mm -hmm. And then another scripture, it says, As a man thinks in his heart, so, so is he. he. Yeah. And for those who don't really want to go with the whole scripture thing the bottom line is and if you if if you are one of an advocate of positive thinking and self-development it's simply saying that you know what you are is what you're going to attract to you yeah and that's the same as as a man thinks in his heart so is he so when we start to put these daily affirmations in place what we're doing is we're setting the parameters for what should take place in that day and so we should start declaring things like i'm going to have a wonderful day or i am happy or i am peaceful or i am calm i am beautiful i am successful and so what you're starting to do is you're starting to determine okay this is what's going to happen for me today mm -hmm. and then you and and then anything or ev or everything that you do should sort of like reinforce these these affirmations and so what 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 am i saying you can't or shouldn't i should say start the day with i am successful and you say that and then you jump in your car and then you turn on the radio and then you have a song like monday stress tuesday stress what do you say either you're successful or you're stressed <laughs> you have to determine what's it gonna be mm -hmm. and i think it's a matter too of 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 how we look at stuff because everything that's unpleasant or uncomfortable is not necessarily negative. That is true. It's ju it, it can just be a learning experience. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of when we were in the gym. The first couple of days to the gym is not a very good feeling. It doesn't feel good. Yeah. But it's, but it's a part of the process for where we're going. Yeah. You know, so when you talk about these affirmations, it's every day, all day. Even if we don't verbalize it, we're playing it over in our head. But we can only do that when we have fed ourselves with some positive stuff. We, lot, we like to pay a lot of attention to our physical diet, but don't pay enough attention to our mental diet. What, what's your mental diet consisting of? What do you listen to on the way to work? What do you listen to when you wake up in the in, in, in the morning? Where if you have the privilege of owning your own office, mm -hmm. while you're about your daily duties, if you're not you know serving or working with an individual, what are you listening to? Because that's feeding your mind, which is going to feed your speech, which is going to determine what kind of experience you're having. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, what you, as you talked about making our conversations more intentional, I, I, I so believe that we have to do a lot more of that mm -hmm. because there's a lot of, um, even in our small talk, we sometimes get to the place where you just have frivolous conversations. Mm -hmm. And the frivolous, what, what's the fruit of the, the conversations? You know, you have to ask the question, okay, so what's the end result of this? Mm -hmm. Let's be more intentional with the conversations. And even as you, you, you talked about having the affirmations, I don't think that a lot of persons even understand and realize the power behind affirmations and being able to say these things and repeat them over, you, you know, over yourself. Um, I, I heard of the, um, there's a gratitude um, challenge or something like that that was going about. And um, it was more or less being able to say what you're thankful for, mm -hmm. starting your day off with, yes. even though things may not necessarily be um, perfect, because who's living that perfect life right now, mm -hmm. um, really and truly, you know? Having that, that the, the ability to say, you know something, I'm thankful for this. This yes. is this is what yeah. I am thankful for. And those, these little simple things even as you talked about what are you listening to on your way to work what are you listening to even in your office what are the types of conversations you're having all of those things actually play a part in what your day really turns out to be yes. at the end of the day because if you continue to have the negativity um just going on all day every day then what is it you're going to actually 
be a reflection of what it is that you've been talking about. So if you shift the way you, you know, there's, um, who is it that said, there's a quote that says, um, I think it's John Wesley that says, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. Yes, I think Wayne Dyer said that as well. Too. Okay, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. well, you change the way that you look at yes, things yes. so that the things that you look at will change. Exactly. Even change the way you speak about things mm -hmm. so that the life that you want to see about the thing, that it will come back to you because you're now speaking it. And not just speaking it, you're actually doing the, yes. the, the, the things that's necessary for, in order for it to come to pass. Because a lot of people like to talk a lot of stuff, but they really don't want to do the work. And it's this, the, the P word, which a lot of people don't like, which is process. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't like process. In the whole, um, you know, the microwave thing, you just pop it in and get yeah. it out. You want it quick, 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 quick. It's not always going to happen that way, where things happen rather quickly. But you have to go ahead and do the work that's necessary. Go through the process mm -hmm. in order for you to become who it is that you are supposed to be or you seek yourself out to be. Mm -hmm. So that's point number three, which is practicing the reciting the daily affirmations mm -hmm. and the positive words. Yes. So point number four, mm -hmm. read, what are you reading? Read self-esteem, enhancing books and articles. Um, you've got to invest some time. See, like you say, everything, nobody wants to do the process. Mm -hmm. Go through the process. You got to where you are right now, wherever that is. Yes. You didn't just wake up there. You, you went through a process, whether that process was subconsciously, whether it was conscious, whether it was intentional or unintentional. It didn't just happen. Yeah. So now we have to now do some stuff. And you know what it is? I think it, 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 it goes on... What, what's important to you. Yeah. Because the value that you place on something will determine how much effort you are going to place. That's or how good. much money you are going to spend. Because as much as I love my makeup, I'm going to buy a book. If you come into my office or you come into my home and you see my books, all of my books are about basically the same thing how to improve myself, mm -hmm. how to master my thoughts, because I understand that there's a direct correlation between what I am thinking and what I am experiencing. And so I have to be willing to not just, like you say, we can talk a whole lot of stuff, mm -hmm. but what are we prepared to do? And then it will just, just going back for a minute, after you've evaluated where you are, then you need to develop that courage mm -hmm. to now take the steps that are necessary to improve your situation. Yeah. And so it goes back to what do you value? You know, some of us we will and I don't want to knock anybody so I won't I won't I will use abstract examples mm -hmm. for the sake of not offending anyone, but we will buy, we would spend money on some stuff that are not that important or I should say that last the 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 benefits of are, are not that lasting. Mm -hmm. But we will think it hard to buy a book for $25 yeah. or, or, or spend some money to go to a workshop or a seminar. We, it's, it's, it's difficult on the whole finding people, I mean, you know, it's sad to say, but a lot of people find it a challenge to invest in themselves. And it's sad that it is the case, but we have to want to invest in ourselves no matter what it is. And even if it means that you have to, um, you know, at the beginning of the year, we look at doing a whole lot of uh, re uh, resolutions, mm -hmm. New Year resolutions, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't so much like the word resolutions. Mm -hmm. um, but we go through this, but do we actually say, you know something, I need to put aside a certain amount of money that's going to go towards my personal development for the year. Mm -hmm. So this is this is something I'm, I'm going to work towards. I have my my my, my um, envelope or however you choose to do it. This is what I, this is the amount that I'm going to budget each month that's going to go towards personal development. Now, what that personal development may look like, um, be it like you say, the books, the courses, the workshops, the seven seminars. It could be local or international. Mm -hmm. For wherever it is that you need to go, you need to just figure it, figure it out. Exactly. Identify what it is those things that you want to do. And be intentional so that you can accomplish the goals that you would have set for it to do. Exactly. Yeah, so like I said, and the thing is, when you, when you talk about reading these things, then, then what it is, it, you can tie it back into your daily affirmations. Mm -hmm. Because it's something, it's not something that you do when you feel like it. 
for truth be told, sometimes you will not feel like it. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to make a decision that every day, this is what I am going to do. I am going to read. I am going to, to, to take some time out mm -hmm. and focus on me. But it goes back to self-esteem. How much do you value yourself? How much do you feel, you know, okay, am I worth it? Mm -hmm. And then if you if you start to come up with, in this evaluation, you, you come up with all sorts of different things, you have to be honest so that once you're honest with yourself, you know what you have to do. Yeah. It's, it's like, I, I need to lose a few extra pounds. I have to evaluate. I had to evaluate. Mm -hmm. And it's a process. I've already gotten some off, but I had to look at how do I eat? What do I eat? If we don't do that, we're, ne we're just fooling ourselves. So, so I, I just wanted to ask you a quick question. You, mm -hmm. you talked about evaluating yourself and, and, and being able to get to that place where it's okay for you to do that. Mm -hmm. How difficult was it for you? Because you talked about you saying that you want to, you need to lose a few pounds. Mm -hmm. How difficult was that? Because a lot of persons, you, you know, even with them having the opportunity to look at something, and um, they see themselves and like, oh my goodness, you know, but yet again, they're not going to be true to themselves to say exactly where it is that they are, what it is mm -hmm. that they need to do. How difficult was that for you to get or come to grips to say, you know, something, all right, this is where I'm at and I need to do X, Y, and Z in order for me to get where I go. It was very difficult. And the reason why it was difficult, because when you are going through this evaluation, you end up sometimes being caught up with every single opinion that's out there. Mm. And and the, the challenge with that is those opinions seldom are in agreement. So it means that you end up shifting to suit the circumstance that you're in. Mm -hmm. Like, let me give you an example, just diverting for a minute. The concept of what is beautiful will vary from culture to culture. Yes. There are some cultures Shoot, I don't need to lose a pound. I am perfect <laughs> royalty. Yeah, yeah. In other cultures, if I didn't have a husband, God help me, because I wouldn't find one no time soon. <laughs> and so what do you do when you are going to constantly be around all sorts of varying things? You have to decide what is your foundation. Mm -hmm. what, is, what's, what's, what are you going to listen to? What voice are you going to listen to? Mm -hmm. And then I remember Oprah said it so beautifully. Sometimes the voice of the world can drown out the voice of God. Wow. So it's all of these things around you. And then what you will be tempted to do is blame. You can't blame because they're doing exactly what they're doing, what they want to do. Mm -hmm. But you have to stop, pull away. What do I want to do? How do I feel about this? Why do I want to do this? And when I started to, to realize that, my expressions, what I have, what I don't have, what I've become, what I look like, they can change because it's only an external expression of who I am. It is not the true me. Mm -hmm. The true me is spirit. It is inside of this body. And if I want it to change, I just have to walk that path of discipline and it'll change mm -hmm. once I'm consistent with it. But once I realize that my worth is not wrapped up in all of these external things, mm -hmm. that's when I started to, to have the courage to make the changes and not be so hard on myself. Because I notice a lot of times when we're hard on ourselves, then we think everybody else is hard on us when it's coming out of us. Mm -hmm. So it, it starts with us. Yeah. Okay. Well, go, let's go straight into um, the, the fifth one. And well, it's just a, a varied point of how you develop yourself. Listening mm -hmm. it goes back to the listening. YouTube is an excellent resource. I like to talk about YouTube University. It's excellent, <laughs> excellent, excellent. Because it has, YouTube has these clips um, under the title Dream, a motivational video. Mm -hmm. And then it has a lot, lots of different var um, variations of it. Now, I caution you, some of them, they come with strong language, but I've learned to like, just filter it. Like, when people get passionate, if they tend to sometimes use strong language, but you have to look past that and look 
at with the messages mm -hmm. so those dream motivational videos they're very very helpful a lot of um, persons like Lisa Nichols, Wayne mm -hmm. Dyer, Sig Sigler, some of the more um, the the persons who are around much longer, like Earl Nightingale. You have things from Bishop T D. Jakes, Joel Olstein, and the list goes on mm -hmm. and on. But if you are constantly listening to stuff that uplift, empower, that make feel good about you, that's a start, you know. Mm -hmm. And 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 the thing is, it's it's not rocket science. If you listen to something and you don't feel good and you feel horrible, then don't listen to it. Because some of some of them like and, and I like to send people to YouTube because it's something for everybody. Yeah. You know, Eric Thomas, Eric Thomas is awesome. He's a hip hop preacher. Now sometimes if I'm a particular way, Eric Thomas is just too much for me. I need to listen to something a little bit more soothing, like Wayne Dyer. But the bottom line is both serve their pers their purpose. purpose. Yeah. And so the thing is the only thing that you have to spend is make sure you have data on your phone. Or make sure you have internet, internet access, access. Wi-Fi. Yeah, and 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 the thing is, so so YouTube is an awesome, awesome resource for keeping your mind occupied. Because listen, think about it. If you spend ten years, fifteen years being negative, you almost have to. Well, not almost. You have to brainwash yourself. Yeah, reprogram. Yes. Reset. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the the five points. Um, the five easy ways to improving your self-esteem. You want to give us those five quick points again? Okay. The Just first, an overview. Okay. The first thing you have to do is evaluate your present location. Be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Secondly, filter your information, your influence sources. That means people, what you're watching, what you, the video games, everything. Everything. You've got to filter that. Then you have to practice reciting positive daily affirmations. You can start your day with it in the middle of the day, the end of the day. Then you want to read positive self-esteem enhancing books, articles, and then you want to make use of YouTube, listening to lots of informational, motivational videos. Mm -hmm. okay. So those are the five easy ways that you can improve your self-esteem. It doesn't take a whole lot of money either, just some time. No, and that's time, 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 you know, a lot of people complain about not having the time, but you have time for whatever it is that you want to find the exactly. time for. Exactly. Well, guys, this is Ria C. Newbold. You've been listening to The Ideal Life. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to look at point number three, which is the four important factors that could impact an individual's self-esteem the f number four, biblical references to boost self-esteem. Number five, the benefits of creating and maintaining a healthy self-esteem. And number six, what everyone ought to know about self-esteem. We'll be right back. Hey, Facebook Live. If you have any question that you would like, Miss... Lisa, to answer, you can let me know. We're on a quick break, so hopefully in the next few minutes we'll be starting all over again. We have a comment coming in from Aaron Brown who says, Your beautiful goddess, continue to push. <laughs> and she also says, You are always worth it. Thank 
we're on a quick break so just in a few more minutes we're going to get back on live continuing with mrs lisa adderley paul talking about self-esteem the importance of a healthy self-esteem so we're going to be back in a few minutes live on air All right, and welcome back. This is Ria C. Newbold, and we have with us today Mrs. Lisa Adderley Paul. She is training us on the topic, the importance of a healthy self-esteem. If you're just tuning in and would like to get the full recording of today's show, you can go to my website, reacnewbold.com, where it will be uploaded within 48 hours. Also, if you'd like to connect with me on Facebook, you can... Go to my Facebook page, which is Ria C. Newbold, Motivate, Activate, Create. Lisa, we were talking about the first two points, actually, mm -hmm. um, on the topic of the importance of healthy self-esteem. And we already talked about what is self-esteem and the five e easy ways to improve an individual's self-esteem. Let's just look quickly at um, the point number three, which is the four important factors that could impact an individual's self-esteem. Okay. First thing is physical appearance, and that physical appearance is simply because that's the first thing that you see, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I touch on it a bit from culture to culture, from region to region. What is beautiful varies, mm -hmm. and so often what we try to do as individuals, we try to fit into the mold of what we call beautiful, mm -hmm. you know, or what our culture determines as beautiful. And then I think that can, can get us into a lot of problems mm -hmm. because what if that, if, if we don't fit into that, into that mold, you know, and when we talk about physical appearance, that can be from your body structure to your body size, to the shape, to skin color, to hair, and, and, and that could be a real challenge. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I know that it is a, a very delicate subject, mm -hmm. and so I will not get very specific because I want to make sure that our, our listeners are not offended. But what we have to realize is that every one of us is a special brand of beautiful. I like that. Each one of us is a special brand of beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and, and that's simply... But, and, and notice I said these things could impact. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily it has to impact because I remember too, um, like I and I would have mentioned to you, in some areas a fuller figure is not welcome. Mm -hmm. In other areas it's welcome. Mm -hmm. So then, do you do do you switch because you're in this area, or do you, or do you switch because this is what you want to do? Mm -hmm. You see, so when we talk about this physical appearance, and like I say, a lot of times we've gotten caught up with the just the, the body size or your weight, but it's even much deeper than that. It's hair, it's skin, it's, mm -hmm. and you know, and I'm not going to go any further than that, but we have to remember that when we look in this mirror, while we want to look the best that we can look, mm -hmm. we are a special brand of beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so let's be mindful of that. And so wherever you find yourself in the world, with whatever concept of what beauty beautiful. is, mm -hmm. you've got to know that you're beautiful. And that has to start from the inside. Yes, most definitely. Because if you don't know that from the inside, there is nothing that you can buy or that you can do that's going to really, really make you comfortable. You will end up being on parade, so to speak, and then when... The doors are closed, and it's just you. You're still gonna wrestle mm -hmm. with 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 your concept of how do you feel about this physical presence that you have. Okay. So you've got to be mindful of that. Go right on to point yeah. number two. Yes. Then we we touch on it before the media influence. This media is something else. It really is. Yes, because, it is. Because you know, social media. I, that's a that's a sermon for another Sunday altogether. You, we, I think you could have a whole show on social media yeah. and the impact. Yeah. But like, take for instance, the media presents ideas of what a happy family looks mm -hmm. like, um, what success looks like, what beautiful is. You know, 
it suggests all of these things. And what we have to be mindful of too is a lot of times people are trying to sell products. So because they're trying to sell products, it is their job to to make you feel like as if you need them. Mm -hmm. So it looks something like this. You know, you you see a lot of skincare products um, when you getting us women to believe that once we hit a certain age, we got to do this and do that because we got to nip, nip it, tuck it, lift it, smooth it. All Listen, it, it got to be right. Yeah. <laughs> but, they, you know, but if, if, if we've got to ask ourselves the question, do I really need this thing? Mm -hmm. Why am I buying this? So we got to make sure that this media does not, step over the boundaries and the thing is we have to create that within ourselves yeah because it is mm. the media influence can come be both positive and negative yes. so you have to pull more to what's positive exactly. and i think even so with the affirmations as you begin to, to to say those daily positive affirmations over yourself understanding from the inside out who it is that you are um it's kind of, you're going to limit the effect of media yes um and what it's really going to have on you in a negative way exactly. so you you're just looking out for the positive things and when you are comfortable in who it is that you are then you know i i, I think what what's going to be be the thing that actually stops you mm -hmm. if you are comforted in who it is that you are from the inside out and yes. being able to allow that expression to come on the outside and how it is that you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. So then this next thing is the past experiences. And a lot of times with past experiences, we tend to think everybody automatically thinks of the negative past experiences. Mm -hmm. Positive past experiences can be a challenge as well. And let me explain why and I decided to jump into that first. If you have acquired a measure of success, then sometimes people get so stressed out about the thought of duplicating or exceeding the success. And so they get stuck right there. Mm -hmm. Because the concept is, what if I fail? I can't the fear of failure. Yeah, I can't remember who said it um, right now. It leaves me, but I tell my students it all of the time. Failure is not a person. It's an event. So I could never be a failure. So failing is something that you do. Mm -hmm. It's not who you are. Right. And there's no big deal in failing. All it simply means is that you have found another way not to do something. Mm -hmm. And every single person, if you start to study, and that's what I've done, start to study successful people. Mm -hmm. and, and all of them have had stories and stories about, you know, like not just, mediocre failing we're talking about epic failure epic <laughs> you know and and then it it, it, it kind of gets you more comfortable in that you know what i wasn't born an expert in this i've got to learn this and so it's okay and then even if something negative mm -hmm. that we call negative or unpleasant what can i get from this what can i gather from this and if if we want to be honest with ourselves in those quote unquote horrible experiences of life, that's when we learned some mm -hmm. things. That's when we develop our courage. That's when we develop our strength. It's like praying for patience. You cannot develop patience without tribulation and and testing. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. then what would you be exercising the patience on if everything is just so glorious? No, you have to exercise. Let's get into point number four because mm -hmm. we have to make sure okay. we get the other points as well. And then the relationships. And when I say relationships, it's not just our husbands or our boyfriends or, you know, significant others. It is every relationship. The people in your life can positively impact mm -hmm. you or negatively impact you. But it's all up to how you allow it. To, to, to happen in your life. But the people in your life are important. And so you should choose them wisely. Who is closest to you? You know, without the, I'm going to kick you to the curb. Okay. <laughs> you know, but you've you got to be mindful of that. Yeah. I love the people who are closest to me because they, they check me on things. They do not allow certain things. Because, and then they let me know, like, I can't tell you what to do, but you're not going to do it around me. Yeah. So then what it does is it says, okay, hmm. 
Let me see what they're saying. Okay. Evaluate it. Yeah, that's true. So what it does is it causes you to think. So you've got to be mindful. Every so often, let's let's take stock of the relationships in our lives. Those are the people that's going to keep you accountable. Mm -hmm. what, what are the things that you're supposed to be doing? Yes. Because sometimes it's, it's easy for us to find ourselves in that place where, you know something, I just don't feel like doing anything this morning. I don't feel like getting up. I don't want to go out of my bed. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But then again, you will have that person that says to you, hey, Lisa, aren't you supposed to be doing this? And guess what? It sometimes just, it's just that one phone call or that one message. You may have a WhatsApp message that shows up and it comes at the, it just right yes. in time. Yes. yes. So that that could be that motivation that gets you up and gets you moving. So we all need those persons in our lives that can help us um, in those times when we may feel even sometimes discouraged. Yeah. Like something's not working out. But we've got those four points. Let's talk about the biblical references to boosting self-esteem. And we're going to just pretty much touch on these because okay. we need to get to the other two points before the show ends. Okay. And these biblical points, these are my favorite ones. Um, Psalm 139, um, 13 and 14. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. And then I'll go into the next one. Mm -hmm. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That is First Peter 2 and 9. And then the final one, For I know the plans and thoughts I mm -hmm. have for you, says the Lord, plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster, to give you a future and a mm -hmm. hope. Jeremiah 29 and 11. And so whenever you are tempted based on the voices of all of the world that's going on, mm -hmm. on what you look like, what you've accomplished thus far and all of that stuff, you remember, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I think even, even with, with uh, just being able to say that, mm -hmm. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. If you don't have any other affirmation to say, mm -hmm. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. And that's something it, you say it until you believe it. Because sometimes that's the thing you don't believe it. Sometimes we say words just because we know how to say them. Mm -hmm. We say the words because somebody asked me to say words. But no, say it until you believe it. Yes. And when you see that that the thing that you are saying now becomes a belief then your actions will follow. Correct, correct. Say it until you believe it so that your actions can follow. Correct. And, and we have to be at that place. We're not just going to be saying words. But see, you talked about it, being intentional about the things that's coming mm -hmm. out of our mouths with our affirmations. That is what's going to position us in order for us to act and allow what's on the inside of us to come out right. and impact the places that we have to impact in the community, wherever it is that mm -hmm. we are, mm -hmm. that's where the impact is going to come from. Let's talk about quickly the benefits of creating and maintaining a healthy self-esteem. Okay. And then you probably can go straight into what everyone ought to know about helping a self-esteem, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. The, the two major benefits I would say to creating and maintaining a healthy self-esteem mm -hmm. is enhanced relationships, mm -hmm. one, and then fulfillment and peace through better life choices. Now, when I say enhanced relationships, when, you, when you've got a comfortable, good thing going on with you, then you realize that you're responsible for your own happiness. Mm -hmm. You realize that, that how you feel has nothing to do with others and vice versa. In other words, you cannot put the responsibility for your happiness, your peace, your well-being on, your, on someone else. Whether that's your husband, whether that's your parents, whether that's your pastor, whomever, you are responsible for you. Yeah. And when you take that initiative and you develop that courage, see all of the things that we've been talking about you want to have courage you want to have patience you want to have self-esteem but you have to develop those things mm -hmm. and it's in the process that we develop them mm -hmm. so when you have this healthy self-esteem going on you don't pressure the people around you I, I I'm talking and I know a lot of people hear me and I know that 
I've pressured some friends along the way. Because, you know, at points when the self-esteem wasn't probably where it should have been, I am sure I stressed out my parents, my husband, everybody else. But I'm also certain that once I position myself better, they're less stressed out by my presence. And if they're less stressed out by my presence, then we, we're going to relate to each other differently. Yeah. And so that's true of our co-workers, our person that we go to church with, mm -hmm. people that we live in, in, you know, in our communities. We just relate to people better when we understand, understand foundationally. It starts with me. And, uh, and then from me, it extends to everyone else. Mm -hmm. You know, but a lot of times, because it's painful or we don't want to say, but I'm responsible. Now we start to blame everyone and everything else. Around us. Mm -mm. All right. Fulfillment yeah. and peace. And that fulfillment and peace comes when you realize, and I think the beautiful thing is, if you look at your life, however it is, good, bad, whatever, and you realize, I am responsible. Because mm -hmm. the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so, so is, he. is he. Yeah. And so I think ownership is a beautiful thing. Because what it does is it tells me that, okay, I'm responsible. And so if I'm responsible, then it means I don't have to wait on anyone for this change to occur. Because if someone else is responsible, then that's a big problem. Because then, then I have to wait on them. Yeah. But if I'm responsible, then that change can start right now. Mm -hmm. Because I'm responsible. And so when I take my ownership, then it means, you know what? I'm responsible for me. And so I can be at peace knowing that I'm in control. Because like the Bible says, God says, thou shalt decree and declare a thing, and it shall be established. So, that's where the peace comes in, because it's all on me now. I can't blame anyone else. And that's where the fulfillment comes in. Yes, too. because I realize that, you know what, I'm not waiting on Rhea. Because what if Rhea doesn't feel like doing it today? What if she doesn't feel like doing it 10 years from now? Mm -hmm. Then that means that I'm in, in, in bondage until Rhea decides to free me? Mm, no. No. Then the last one, what everyone should know about self-esteem, and I, I kind of already said it before, but mm -hmm. just reiterating it. Yeah. You are responsible for your own self-esteem. Nobody else. I, and you might say, but Lisa, what, you know, this happened to me, and I went through this, and I went through that. The longer that I live, I realize all of us have went through some traumatic stuff. Yeah. And so that doesn't let us off the hook. All it simply means is that, you know what, my experience is different from yours. Yes. But I have that power because of the fact that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Because of the fact that, that, that when God designed me and allowed me to come down here for this space, this, this time, there's a plan. Yeah. And so the processes that I go through is just working that plan. You know, that's it. And so, you know, I'm responsible for me. Yeah. And then that next point is it requires daily effort. It's a daily thing. We cannot do it today and leave it alone like, you know, because you're feeling so blissful, you read a Wayne Dyer book or some other motivational book today. What today is? It's June. And you don't pick up another book until September. No, just the same way you bathe several times a day. Just as much as is necessary, you, you gotta. It's gotta be a daily effort. Yeah, it daily must, effort. It must be a daily effort to develop yourself. Mm -hmm. Listen, I am. I, I'm sure that our listening audience would have gotten so much from you today, talking about self-esteem. We're totally out of time. Believe it or not, I mean wow. this, this. This time just flew by us today. And I know that everyone, they, they, you know, they're saying, you know something, I think I got, I got a good bit from you and what it is that you had to offer. And even so, if they've, they've not done the positive affirmations before, I'm hoping that they will begin Please. to use the affirmations and just start with one. Yes. Just start with one. Starting it off, I am. And whatever um, comes behind the I am, make sure it lines up with who God says that you are yes. and not just you yourself. So I want to say thank you so much, Mrs. Paul, for coming on our show today and sharing on your topic, the importance of a healthy self-esteem. And I, I know, listen, I know that there are some persons who really got good meat from what it is that you had to say. How can they get in contact with you if they need to? reach out to you okay well you can email me at radiateinspiration242 at yahoo.com 
That's Radiate Inspiration242 at yahoo.com. Or you can just hit me up on myself, 434 1579. That's 242. Yes. 242-434-1579. Thank you. Yes, just in case we have yes. international um, 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 persons listening that. in and want to get in contact with Mrs. Paul. If you're just tuning in and you'd like to get a full recording of today's show, you can go to reacnewbold.com where it will be uploaded within 48 hours. I would like to say a special thank you to our sponsors for today's show. That's Converge for all of your digital marketing services and Alive for free and unlimited Alive to Alive calls, terms and conditions apply. I'd like to say thank you to you, our listening you. audience, for tuning in with us today. And yet again, thank you to the sponsors. Without them, we would not have a show. And guess what? We would not be able to transform communities, cities, and nations one training at a time. Thank you again for tuning in, and I'll see you here next week, Saturday, from 2 to 3 p.m., on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. I pray that you'll have a lovely rest of the afternoon. And see you next week.